In this lecture, we are going to discuss the logic of trade and the economic theories and principles behind um, trade. And we're going to explain why individuals and countries should concentrate on production of the good for which they have the lowest opportunity cost um, of production compared to the person that they're considering trading with. So to get us thinking about the topic, should Phil Mickelson mow his own lawn? Phil Mickelson is one of the best golfers, as we know, in the world. And um, an economist would say that Phil Mickelson should not mow his own lawn. If he has a few extra hours on a Saturday afternoon, Phil Mickelson should spend that time working on his golf game or making a public appearance and making a bunch of money um, rather than mowing his lawn when he can pay somebody else 20 or 30 or 50 dollars to mow his lawn for him. So um, because of the high value of Phil, Phil Mickelson's time and the opportunity cost that Phil Mickelson would face if he took the time to mow his lawn, um, it just doesn't make sense for him to spend his time doing that. Let's take a look at two individuals who are working on the school yearbook and um, I'm going to take you through an example here of um, absolute and comparative advantage so that you understand these terms and how they fit in and how this theory works. So Sarah works on the school yearbook and in one hour of time she can either crop 20 pictures or write 15 captions. And here you see her production possibility frontier for working on the yearbook. So again, Sarah can either crop 20 pictures or write 15 captions in that hour of time. Um, Rob is also working on the yearbook, and Rob isn't quite as productive as Sarah, but Rob can either crop 15 pictures or write 10 captions in an hour of time. So to summarize this data in a table here, this is an or situation. Sarah can either crop 20 pictures or write 15 captions, and Rob can either crop 15 pictures or write 10 captions. So for a long time people looked at this and thought okay Sarah's better at everything than Rob so Sarah has no reason to work with Rob on accomplishing the task or Sarah has no reason to to specialize in trade with Rob and um, that is called absolute advantage so Sarah can produce the most with the same resources. With that one hour of time, Sarah can crop more pictures or write more captions and than Rob could um, with his hour of time. But just because Sarah has the absolute advantage in both, um, both of the tasks does not mean that she can't benefit from specializing and, and trading with Rob according to um, comparative advantage. So comparative advantage is the theory of comparative advantage came about um, more recently in the last couple hundred years and when this was discovered it really was a big breakthrough in the arguments for um, free trade and no barriers to trade and compared the theory of comparative advantage um, helps us figure out that the person who can produce a good with the least opportunity cost should specialize in production of that item and if you can identify who has the comparative advantage in production of each good um, then we can help produce more overall so again, with our example, we know that Sarah has the absolute advantage in both picture cropping and caption writing. But let's go ahead and figure out who has the comparative advantage. So to discover this, we're going to have to calculate Sarah's opportunity cost um, for one picture and Rob's opportunity cost for one picture and see whose is lower. And so therefore, see who is better at cropping a picture, who gives up less in, in, a, in order to crop a picture. But the way that the data is presented right now, um, we just we can't make a comparison unless we um, reduce these numbers a little bit because um, to say that the opportunity cost for Sarah of cropping 20 pictures is 15 captions and the opportunity cost for Rob of cropping 15 pictures is 10 captions, you know, that doesn't really give us um, a good point of comparison. That's like com comparing apples to oranges and we want to be able to compare apples to apples. So we're going to reduce. And um, if we reduce the data here, what we're going to do is we're going to pull captions over pictures to be able to reduce this um, to figure out what Sarah's opportunity cost is of one picture. So Sarah's opportunity cost of one picture is 15 twentieths of a caption or three-fourths of a caption. And Rob's opportunity cost 
of one picture, again we're going to pull the 10 over the 15, is 10 fifteenths of a caption or two thirds of a caption when we reduce that. Now we are talking, now we can make some comparisons um, and, and now we know that Sarah gives up three fourths of a caption every time she crops a picture and Rob gives up two thirds of a caption every time he crops a picture. So Rob has the lower opportunity cost per picture cropped. So therefore Rob has the comparative advantage in picture cropping. So if Sarah and Rob are working together to do these two jobs, Rob is, he has a comparative advantage in picture cropping because he gives up less per picture cropped than Sarah does in terms of writing captions. Now we know that since there are only two individuals and two jobs, um, if Rob has the comparative advantage in picture crop cropping, then Sarah is going to have the comparative advantage in caption writing, but let's just go ahead and do the math and prove that that's true. So if Sarah writes a caption, she gives up, now we're going to pull this 20 over the 15, she gives up 20 over 15 pictures or one and a third um, pictures that she could have cropped instead. And Rob gives up um, one and a half pictures every time he writes a caption because we're going to pull this 15 over the 10 and reduce that. So um, we can see that Sarah has the lower opportunity cost because Sarah only gives up one and a third pictures and Rob gives up one and a half every time um, they write a caption. So Sarah has the comparative advantage in caption writing. So we would say Sarah should write captions and Rob should crop pictures. That's the the job that each individual should specialize in according to the theory of comparative advantage. And putting it all together here, um, we can see that Sarah and Rob's individual production possibility frontiers will be less than the combination of goods they can produce if they specialize and trade and work together. So when Sarah just crops pictures, I'm sorry, when Sarah just writes captions, then she can write 15, and when Rob just crops pictures, he can crop 15, and so that combination lies outside of either of their individual production possibility frontiers, and they'll both be better off if they specialize in trade. So the theory of absolute advantage is an old one, and um, we really need to focus on individuals' comparative advantages. All right, there are two ways of determining the comparative advantage in a situation, and, it, and the way that you do the math um, the way that you reduce those numbers and which number you pull over the other is all going to depend on how the data is presented. So sometimes the data will be presented in this way where the output varies and that's um, what we just looked at in the Sarah and Rob example. We said they each have one hour of time, that's their input, and the output varies. The amount of work they can do in that hour of time varies just like here with the USA and Korea example. So in one week, the USA can make this many PS3s or this many iPads, and Korea could make this many PS3s or this many iPads. This is what's varying. The output is what's varying in a constant input. The one week of time is their input to production. Um, and in that situation, we're going to pull those numbers over to do the math, just like um, we did with the Sarah and Rob example. But sometimes the data will be presented where the inputs to production vary, and um, for example, we might be told how many hours it takes to produce one unit of product. So it takes the U.S. 30 hours to produce a PS3 and 60 hours to produce an iPad, and it takes Korea only 20 hours to produce a PS3 and 10 hours to produce an iPad. So if we're looking for the absolute advantage in a situation where the inputs are what's varying, then you're going to look for who can can produce the good with fewer inputs. So Korea would have the absolute advantage here in PS3s and in iPads because it takes them less time to produce each of those items. Now when you're doing the math to figure out the co um, comparative advantage, you are going to pull the number under rather than over to be able to find your fractions and reduce them. And we'll practice some more of that in class. Alright, some of the benefits of, of trade are the fact that individuals can specialize in, in what they're best at producing so we're going to have better quality goods the production will be more efficient and there will be an increased number of customers and profit in the market. Um, we're also going to end up with more goods and services for both parties so consumers will have more choices. And now I have a couple of um, problems for you to try 
and we will go over these answers in class. So I'm going to go ahead and throw them up here for you. Practice problem number one. Um, the first thing that you want to think about is how is the data being presented? What is varying? Because depending on whether the inputs or outputs vary, you're going to do your math, set up your fractions differently when you're trying to calculate the comparative advantage. So here we have the pounds of fish or cheese produced in one hour of time. So I'll tell you right now, the inputs are staying constant. The output is what's varying. So this problem is going to be set up just like the one that we did um, previously with Sarah and Rob. Okay, I want you to look at this data and figure out who has the absolute advantage in fish production and cheese production, or who can do the most with the same number of resources. And then go ahead and do the math to figure out who has the comparative advantage in fish production and cheese production. So go ahead and pause this and try to work that out. And practice no problem number two um, that I want you to take a look at is um, set up a little differently. So in this data, we see the number of acres required or the number of inputs that are required to produce one bushel of output. Therefore, the inputs are varying. That's the answer to our first question here. The inputs are varying and the outputs um, are constant. And so you're going to do your math differently. You're going to pull those numbers under instead of over. So go ahead and try to figure out who has the absolute advantage in apple production and pear production and then after doing the math, who has the comparative advantage in apple production and pear production? And we will go through those answers in class. So just come ready to um, compare your results with your group, and, and we'll talk through these together. Uh, there's also a really good reading in the supplemental materials, the Unit 1 packet that I gave you, um, that goes through and explains um, an example of the input method and the output method. Um, so go ahead and, and read through that carefully too because this topic is confusing and the, the number one thing people screw up is trying to remember um, how to set up those fractions and do the math depending on the way that the data is being presented. So I'll give you some more hints and tips in class, but um, do look through those resources that I gave you so that you're prepared to practice. All right, and that is it.